My team, the Atlanta Braves, doesn't know how to hit because all they do is swing for the fences. Don Mattingly says sometimes the game is unwatchable in, in discussing the, the no-hitters and the, the, the streak that we've been on where we've seen the Mariners. The Mariners are certainly unwatchable. Yes. They've been no-hit twice, twice in the last, what, three weeks? Yep. Maybe less than that. Um, and we've already seen six no-hitters before June even arrives. It's bad. And, I mean, the, we, we talked about a couple of these things. I know you guys had a good conversation about the no-hitters yesterday when I was out. The, 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 they, they did not think through what they did with the baseball because um, – Deadening the baseball a little bit is turning some warning, uh, some home runs, which are good at least for the offense, into warning track outs, which is another bad thing that results in, in no offense. Guys aren't changing the way they swing to now hit more effective ground balls. Uh, there's a contact problem in baseball. There's a ball in play problem in baseball. Um, now, on the no-hitter thing, look, it's bad that there are so many. It's still an event. I well, mean, it, there are too many. It's an event. It's too easy. It's He's still an event. If your team's throwing one, you're flipping over. So how many three- or four-hit games have we seen? That, to me, yeah, is that's the up. issue. That's, up. that's it, up, too. Half innings with no hits. That right. I read an article about it at The Ringer yesterday. Half innings with no hits are way up. One, two, three innings. Um, six innings with no hits, seven innings with no hits, up, up. Well, I, I think that's what Mattingly is addressing. He's like, sometimes the game's unwatchable because we've reached a point where he's, he's being asked about the no-hitters and the fact that we've seen six. The no-hitters are fine because pitchers are having a great game and there's a storyline behind it. Uh, I, I think the issue that he's having and that a, a lot of baseball fans or the casual fan in general would have right now is what he says where he says it's been coming and it's been building and now we're at a point where I think it's getting much more attention because it's just a game that sometimes is unwatchable. You see guys you talk to and you don't even like watching the games because there's nothing that goes on in them. He's not referring to the no-hitters being unwatchable because the no-hitters are boring. He's he's referring to and I, I, I get it. He's talking about those three or four hit games where there's nothing going on and one run is being scored and you've got the 2-1 final or whatever. It's just... It, it, it's just a, a, a grind. Clayton well, Kershaw said much the same thing. He said, you know, congratulations to Kluber and yeah, to whoever and the other one was most John recently. Means. Good for them, and they're good pitchers, and they deserve these things. Yeah, the guy in Detroit. But overall, this is trending in a bad way for the game. Now, Clayton Kershaw is a fan of good pitching, obviously, and he, <laughs> yeah. he's on the side of the pitcher, yeah. and he's, he's saying it. You know, when, when a premier pitcher is saying this is going in a bad direction and the game is, is suffering, that, that's, that's a great illustration last night in the Braves-Pirates game of this. I'm listening to Chip Carey on the call, and he's describing the Pirates. You know, this this young, plucky, scrappy group that takes a pitch and looks at where the fielders are and punches it the opposite way against the shift and hits line drives up the middle to get on base. And I'm thinking the whole time, oh, you mean baseball. <laughs> you mean they actually know how to hit. Like this is a team that knows how to hit. And, yeah. and my team, the Atlanta Braves, doesn't know how to hit because all they do is swing for the fences. And the perfect example is they get to extra innings. The Braves bring in scrub Jacob Webb, who promptly gives up three consecutive hits. All different ways. Opposite field line drive, shot up the middle, bloop shot to right on a, on a curve ball that gets home for a base hit. You're seeing this complexity of how you can get on base, which is amazing. The Atlanta Braves come up. Freddie Freeman, reigning NL MVP, can't do anything but swing for the fences. Promptly pops out. Marcelo Zuna, a guy who looks like an overpaid scrub this year, <laughs> promptly pops out. Shocked on the previous at-bat when he tries to watch a home run go out that's caught at the warning track that it wasn't gone. And then Ozzie Albies pops up to end the game. Strands runner on, game over when they start with a runner on second base. This is the problem not just with the Braves, but you're seeing it across baseball. Guys don't know how to hit anymore. We need Tony Gwynn. We need Ted Williams. We need someone, Don Mattingly. We need someone who can instruct young players that it's not all about hitting a home run. When you come up, it can be about getting on base because when you put the ball in play and can get on base, crazy things can happen like scoring runs or breaking up a no-hitter. That can happen when you get on base also. 
I, I agree with you, uh, absolutely. But I also think the pitching has gotten so good, and it is harder than ever to make contact and to make good contact. Are guys swinging for the fences too much? Yes, and is that set hitting back? Absolutely. But you look at the science of pitching now, and you read articles about spin rates and all of this stuff that they're breaking down in the lab, and pitching is so good right now. They've got to come up with something. And I don't want drastic. I don't want them to move the mound. Uh, maybe lower the mound. I don't know what. I don't want crazy, but I want changes. They have made changes in favor of hitting before. They have to make changes now in favor of hitting again. This guy at the ringer who I read, he said, and he's bummed out by all the no-hitters and the favorable pitching, he wants it to be terrible this year, the hitting, in so that the league has no choice but to implement serious changes that help with contact. Smaller strike zone, uh, you know, uh, restrictions. I, th I think one of the big things is restrictions on the number of pitchers. I understand you have to now face three batters if you come in. It doesn't go into the next inning. That's good. Make a starter, and you can't do this by rule, but you can do it by not having 13 pitchers on your staff. Jeff Passan is a big proponent of this. Make the staff smaller and make a starter then have to stay in the game to face a guy a third time. So that a batter has a chance to get a read on a guy, and he doesn't have a new pitcher every time he's up to bat yeah. who's got some other otherworldly slider that he hasn't seen before. So I can see, uh, you know, conceivably 12 or 13 pitches from the same guy and get a read on him instead of, oh, I kind of have a feel for that guy, and he's gone, it starts, and he's not uh, going to be seen again for five days. This is not a Major League Baseball rules issue. This starts with batters understanding hitting. Because I know they're capable of it. I see plenty of times that third strike, that punch-out strike, is the hardest one to get when guys shorten their swing, they're more defensive at the plate, and they're fouling everything off, fouling good pitches off, fouling good pitches off. I saw Dansby Swanson last night foul pitches off. Finally, gets a fastball, he times up, and hits a home run. I know guys can do it. Too often you see guys that are swinging the same way three straight times they well, come I agree up with you and that. are completely fooled, but... I really think the first adjustment, and some of these rule changes could be, could be good for the game. I'm not disagreeing with you. But the first step is batters understanding hitting more and actually going out and implementing it and not looking foolish so often at the point.